Well, let's get into how to assign defaults and how to do some of the advanced parameterization fetching, um, some of the other things in here. Let me just create us a new report, kind of uh, loosely based, I guess, on the last one that we did. Uh, so let me just make a data source. I'll call it production. It'll map to the production shared connection and get rid of that. And uh, parameter was what color, right? So color, so which color? And we'll allow multiple values. Uh, the available values can be specified. Uh, oops, I always think that I can hit just enter and it's going to take me to the next line. And red, red. Okay. And this time, let's actually populate it with a default value. Uh, so my specify values is I'm going to make it black. Okay. So when the report launches, same exact things as the available values. You can specify this behind the scenes, or you can have the default values arise from a query. I'll give you a hint. Uh, generally speaking, whenever I use this, I often use this with a top query. Okay. So like I'm very often I'm looking for the top 10 of something and that's going to maybe be my defaults. So the top 10 search terms would be the default, for example. The top 10 selling products would be the default products that launched. Uh, just a personal anecdote. may not match what you're working with. But so the specify values, I'll just set it to default at uh, black. And add my data set. Select all from where color in color right? and matches the parameter right there. It'll do that automatically. This is the parameters listed in the query. These are the predefined parameters that you have already set up. Okay. So I say, OK, uh, add my table. Uh, product, I, I guess I'll put that there. Color. Okay. And so it's going to default to black because we started with black. You can see it, put it right there. And then we can change if we later decide to include black and blue or, or whatnot, right? Default parameters are very easy to work with. Okay. Now, one situation that you can get into with your parameters is what is called dependency chains. Okay. And what I mean by a dependency is when one parameter is based on another parameter. OK, so. Um, Let's add another, let me think of uh, like this product category ID. Um, so I'll add in a parameter uh, for category. And which category do you want to see? And it's text, and they can only do a single. Um, OK, stick with me, because we're going to have to understand the database a little more. So behind the scenes, there's this table called product category. And each product is in a product category ID. So if I've got a product that I'm looking at and it says its product category ID is 8, I can look that value up to find out that it's in the product category handlebars. So let's say that we want to drop down the name right here. So coming back over here to Report Builder, um, I want handlebars. So this is what I want to have it showing to the users. But then the value needs to be 8 because that's the product category ID. So this is what the user sees, but then it equates to the product category ID of 8. Uh, what was another one that we had? Uh, road bikes matches up to 6. And we'll do one more. Um, touring bikes matches up to seven. OK. So I'm choosing the available values for this particular parameter, for the category parameter. Okay. 
Now right now it doesn't do anything and I have really made no changes. This doesn't matter, does it? It shows it up at the top and I select a, but does it matter? No, it doesn't matter because I haven't wired it up to my data set yet. You see, we defined the parameter, but then we didn't put it in our data set. So our data set does not reference this parameter at all. So the easiest way to add it is to go to the query and say, and product category ID in, and yes, I could use equal, but I wouldn't, equal category. Now, how do I know it's called at category? Because over here, I can see my parameter being named at category. Now, what do I have to consider? I have to think that these two guys have to have the same data type. So product category ID in the database is an integer. Therefore, product category over here has to be an integer as well, or I'm going to get a type mismatch. So I say OK, and I run my query, choose my handlebars over here, and my touring bikes, maybe I have some of those that are black, road bikes that are black, there we go, road bikes that are black. I just didn't have any of the others, and I didn't set my table to display there are no bikes with this setting. Um, so over here, back over here under category, its default type is text, and .NET is able to convert the text to an integer, but it's actually better for me that I can actually control this conversion myself. I do explicit, and I change it to an integer, because what really matters is the value type. It's not the label type that you're setting. It's the value, because that's what's going to be passed back to the query. Okay. So this is what the user sees in the drop-down. This is what gets substituted into the query. So I want to make sure that this is actually an integer type. And it has no effect right now on running of our query. Okay. We can say touring bikes, or what was it? Road bikes, that was the right one? Yeah, road bikes, sorry. And when we come over here, I can actually set that to be a default value as well. I can say, you know, um, 7 wait a minute, should I say road bikes or should I say seven? Okay, notice the drop down. It needs to be one of the values that you defined in the available values. So I want it to be six. Okay. So I say go. And so now it's going to default to black road bikes and I can change it and do whatever I need to, right? This is not a multi-value parameter. This is a singular value parameter. So that's your optional, or sorry, not, that's not an optional, that's a default parameter value. Okay. Now there's other things in here that we can set as well, a parameter's visibility. I can set this parameter to hidden. Now this is somewhat like a private variable in an application. Uh, this means that the user will not see it, yet the action is still taking place. So it's still going to be a default of six. But when we actually run the report, you no longer see it up here. So it's sort of an internalized or a hidden report parameter. Now the, uh, the hidden and the internal over here, internal is really for you uh, to be able to make changes and do settings, not specifically for what I'm using it for here. For what we're using the parameter values for in our report, there's no difference between hidden and internal here. Uh, but when we're setting properties, there's going to be a small difference. Bottom line is your users will not be able to see anything that's not set to visible. Okay. All right, so once I mark this visible again, now the users can make that change and can actually see that setting. Now, the very final one here that I want to take a look at before we finish is the idea of the advanced. Now, this is really going to affect really about the only time when you have multiple parameters and you have a dependency. So a dependency is when one parameter is built on a data set that uses another parameter. Okay, so... Um, trying to think of like a scenario here that's not too complicated that I could just demo 
uh, very quickly. Um, uh, let's see. So I'm going to make a data set that says, um, uh, let's see, um, t -t 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 uh, product uh, bike category. Okay, so that's the name of it here. Take my space out. And so it's going to say select product category ID from product category where name equal bikes. Okay, and I'll even just make it say top one. Okay. So and now I'm going to go back to my parameters list and I'm going to say uh, bike category ID. Okay, that's the name. And I'm not going to make this a prompt because I'm going to make this a hidden parameter. And so you and I can see it because we're in the designer, but we could not see it as a user. And the default, I don't even have to set the available values. The default value comes from the query bike category. Okay. So you can see here that the value of this particular parameter comes from the data set and the field, the value is set from this field. Okay. So far, no dependency chain. Okay. And it doesn't affect what we're doing at all. However, I now I'm going to go back to my category. This is, this is tricky, and, and I'm sorry, it just is. Um, it's, just, it's kind of an advanced thing here. But I'm going to go back to my category parameter, and I'm going to say, you know what? Um, you know, I don't want this to all be set by specifying this. I want to actually get the values from a query. Okay. Well, I need a new data set to do that. Okay. So I'm going to make a new data set, and I'm going to call this uh, product categories. And so I'm going to say select name, comma, product category ID from product category. where parent product category ID equals bike category ID. So let's talk about this. So there is now a dependency. The value of the product category data set is dependent on the bike category parameter. There's a dependency here. Okay. So we say OK. And we go back to the category. And we come over here and we say the default values, the available values go from the query product category. And the value field is the category ID. And the label, that which the user sees, is the name. Okay. And when we run our report now, we're going to get an error. We have a dependency issue. And it's so goofy. Uh, it, you can read it right here. Forward dependencies are not valid. And it's such a, um, I, I, don't, I don't want to say, I, it's just silly. Um, so here's the problem. In your list of parameters, because category comes first, it gets evaluated first. So it gets evaluated in this order, in the ordinal position. So this is evaluated first, then this one, and then this one. It's not smart. What you have to do is you have to move category down below bike category ID, but you can't do it by dragging and dropping. So guess what you have to do? Delete it and add it back in. <laughs> and once you add it back in, then you've gotten rid of your error. So which category? Um, and your just make the exact same change, uh, exact same settings, okay? Your default values, um, I don't know, whatever we had chosen, right? Once you do that, now this one, which is the parent, gets evaluated first, okay? So when we come over here, we can actually generate the report now, okay? So kind of tricky. When it, oh, we got onto this, by the way, by this advanced tab, uh, because when you're working with dependency chains, you have to basically say, at what point do these data sets back here get updated? 
when the user changes a parameter on the report, does this go back and change the data set? Do my report, or does, pull this back up here. If, so if the user comes over here and changes this to mountain bikes, should this be rerun? Okay, those of you in ASP.NET or in data binding, uh, basically, do you want to rerun this query to come up with this data again when the user changes this value or not? That's what that means. Right? So now you've just kind of filtered it there. Right? So like I said, you're just going to have to play around with these. Before you start playing around with them, though, I do want to show you two different things. In the next video, we have to talk about the concept of an optional parameter because it's actually somewhat tricky. Okay. And then I want to show you how you can actually change certain properties by using the parameters as well and expressions with your parameters. So let's just come back on the next video.